everyone, Jose here, and today is all about coding challenge, okay? So today I'll be interviewing uh, Alexander for the role of an experienced uh, Node.js developer, and this is the first part of the coding challenge, the prep code challenge, okay? Before I let you know uh, the problem that we're going to be solving today, I would like to welcome Alexander for our stage. And hi, Alexander, how are you doing and how is your day doing so far? Hi, Jose. Very good. And you? Not bad. Not bad. We are getting there, right? Okay, so could you please introduce yourself and tell me a little bit about your background uh, and your experience? Then we'll take from there. Yeah, sure. So uh, my name is Alexander. I'm from Brazil and I'm working as a software uh, engineer and a senior Node.js developer at Turing. And I have more than seven years of experience with Node.js. Okay, great, 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 great. Okay, so the problem that we're going to be solving today is a really good problem. Okay, this today is all about decorators. Um, what do you understand about decorators in TypeScript? Okay, so decorator is a programming pattern which is common to many different languages such as TypeScript. And also there are many frameworks that uses a lot of decorators such as Angular. Angular uses decorators to perform many different features. And decorator is all about wrapping your code with another code to change its original behavior. It's a met, uh, decorator is a metaprogramming feature in which we use uh, annotation. So for example, you can annotate a class to change uh, the class behavior. You can annotate methods. You can annotate uh, properties and also method accept, uh, accessors like gets and sets. And there are many usages of decorators such as performing caching, error handling, data validation and logging. So for example, if in your system you have a very specific business rule to perform error handling, you can create a decorator with this specific uh, business rule implemented and then you just apply this decorator to as many uh, me methods that you want to perform this rule. So you end up with a very cleaner code since this complex logic will not be inside the, the methods. You only have the annotation of the decorator. And also you can perform a decorator composition to compose different de composing different decorators to achieve uh, uh, a, more, a more wide uh, uh, change in behavior of your method. Got you. Does it make sense for you? It makes sense. That? Makes sense. Yes, it does. All right. So let me see. Just see if I got that. Okay. You said that decorators with decorators you can decoupling the business rules for for your function to another function and reuse that across your project. Something like that. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Also, uh, you also said that you can use more than one decorator in your function, right? Uh, how can we do that? Okay, so in TypeScript, you can compose decorators and the composition of decorators in TypeScript uh, happens in a very similar way to function composition in JavaScript. You can put uh, your decorators one below the other, but just pay attention that these decorators will be executed from the bottom to the top. So they will change the behavior of the method uh, apply, being applied from the bottom to the top. Okay, let me see if I got that. So let's suppose you have um, three decorators, four decorators, five main decorators. Let's start with two decorators, okay? And then you have decorator one and decorator two. Uh, in which order it will be executed? First, we will be executed the decorator two and then the decorator one. Okay, got you. All right, so uh, let's get started with the challenge, okay? Could you please okay. uh, share your screen? But before that, of course you do, but I have to ask, do you have any uh, JavaScript TypeScript editor in your local environment? Oh yeah, I use Visual Studio Code. Okay, great. Could you please open Visual Studio Code and in a TypeScript project also share your screen? Then I will explain what we need to do. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, is it my screen visible now? Mm, it's coming. All right, it is. I can see that. Thank you for sharing. 
All right, so okay. before we start with decorators, okay, I'll explain uh, the challenge, uh, the today's challenge, okay? We need one function. You can write this function right away in JavaScript, okay, or in TypeScript, it's up to you, okay, that will receive an argument and then we'll return a reversed string for uh, from that argument, okay? It will receive a string and then okay. it will return the reversed string. Could you please... Uh, do that in JavaScript in a simple function that will return a reverse string. Okay, uh, I use a, types, a TypeScript approach. So let's create first the function uh, reverse. We receive a string. And then it's going to return the string. We are first uh, need to split the string. Uh, to get an array, then reverse the array, and then join to have the reverse string. So gotcha. split. Then perform the reverse on the array. And then we join. And how can we execute that? Yeah. Reverse. And then we get the reverse screen on the terminal. Okay, all right. Um, okay, so you you said you choose JavaScript for that, right? Uh, it's something missing in your function. Uh, what's missing in your function? Oh, yeah. We can add the type of the return, which is the string. Nice. All right, so, okay, basically that. That's what we need to do, okay? We need to, to replicate that. Uh, but using decorators. So when you look to, to that function, how many decorators do you think we can create uh, use to replicate that uh, behavior? Okay, uh, here I see that we are performing uh, three different uh, operations. I think we could create a, a composition of three decorators, one to split, another one to reverse, and then join. I gotcha. Think. All right, three decorators, right? One to split, yeah. one to, yeah, makes sense. All right, so let's get started with this, okay? Uh, before that, could you please zoom in a little bit? Uh, they need to make it easy for our uh, developers out there. Okay, that's great. They can, is it better now? Yeah, it is. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, let's yeah, create a, a class in TypeScript called uh, String Manager, okay? And that class will have a method to print, just print, okay, the reversed string. But the challenge is okay. we need to do that using decorators, okay? Okay. Okay, let's start with the class. Let's call it string okay. manager, string manager. Okay, so before we begin, uh, uh, first we need to enable the decorators since the decorator is still an experimental feature on TypeScript. We just have to uncomment this line on the TS config file. Now we can use the correct. Yeah, yeah. You just killed my question. Yeah, I was <laughs> I was expecting to see an error there, but yeah, you did great. Okay. <laughs> okay. Nice. So let's start creating the class string manager, and then uh, with a simple print method. That just uh, print the yeah, string. Yeah, let's console log. Yeah, console log string. Okay, and okay. how can you execute let's, that? Let's, yeah, let's create uh, an object string manager, a new string manager, and then we call the, the print method. Mm -hmm. Like this. All right. Okay. okay, it's returning reload because we're not doing anything, right? Exactly. All right, and following that function, okay, uh, let's create the first decorator. Okay, what that decorator uh, should be. Okay, let's, okay, we can create any one, right? The, the, what is, is important, that's the order that we call it, right? Let's create one decorator to split uh, in, and return that, uh, an, an array of that string. Okay, uh, you want just the split first? Yeah, let's go one by one. Okay, 
So the idea is to change this method to split the string before uh, print on the screen. So the idea is to change this method using the greater to add a split right here. So let's do it. Okay. Uh, first of all, let's annotate the method using split. And then we create the function, which is the decorator. This fun uh, uh, a decorator function has three parameters. The first one is the target, which is the which is, which holds a reference to the prototype of the class that uh, has the method that we are applying this decorator. So in this case, the target will be the prototype of string manager class. And then the second one is the property property key, which is the name of the method that we are decorating. In this case, will be the print. And then the third uh, parameter is a descriptor. Okay, I'm a bit confused, okay? You said the second uh, param is uh, the name of the method that we're going to change. Exactly. But you, you write uh, prop key string. Okay, this is just the notation, right? You have this is dynamic. What we're saying. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah, and All the right. third parameter is the descriptor, which is a special object that holds uh, main information about the method that we are annotating. And Perfect. one special value is the uh, descriptor value, which holds a reference to the function that we can change. Nice. Okay. And before you you do that. No, okay, let's go, move on. Okay, let's move on. I'll ask the questions uh, on the fly, okay? Okay, so first I will create a reference to the original method because we are going to change the, my idea is to change the first parameter and then call the original method, original method, scripture value. Okay, uh, now we need to reset the descriptor value, which is the function. We're going to set it to a new uh, function. Here, I'm going to use the rest operator to be to have a dynamic number of arguments. A list, you said, you mean, right? A list of yeah. arguments, yeah, okay. Exactly. And then uh, I think uh, we can reset the first arguments to perform the split operation. And then we split. And then now we can call the original method. Call or apply? Uh, apply because we, uh, we need to keep the same scope as the original class. So we need to, to use the same this. And then we send the arguments all right. Okay. See, and then you get the the splitted string. Okay. All right. So uh, you got you you are getting the arg zero, right? Um, using the structuring uh, assigned syntax, how can you get the uh, the first argument for that list? Sorry, could you repeat your question? Yes. So, uh, do you do you know what the structuring as uh, assigned methods are? It's assigned syntax. Yeah. Okay. And to get the first element from one array, how can you do that using the structure uh, assigned system? So, uh, syntax. Yeah. Uh, let me think. Uh... No. no worries. I'll let you know. Okay. To okay. get the first element, you have to create const. Okay. In that const, you can create an array. Okay. Const. Um, no, no. Const array. You have to remove arg. Yeah. No, no, no. Card brackets. Sorry. Brackets. Yeah. 
and then you put anything inside. This will be uh, not. Uh, this will be the first element. Okay, from args. Like and this. Then, yeah, this will be the first element. And then next line, you can uh, split that. Like this? Something like this, but this is a const, right? You cannot, yeah, create a node, a splitted array. Yeah. That's it. Let's see if it will execute the same. And then, uh, no. arc split it. Like this? Yeah. All right. So, uh, then you have the same uh, behavior, right? But that's time using right. the structure assignment. All right. So, what else we need to do? Now we need to reverse that, right? How can you reverse that? Okay. So, uh, we are changing this method to apply the split operation. I think the next next step would be uh, apply the reverse. Yeah. Reverse. So, uh, let me think. Uh, actually, uh, first we need to change this method to to have the reverse operation, and then we we split. So I'm going to add the next annotation right here, reverse, and then I'm going to just copy this. Yeah, sure. I do copy paste all the time. Reverse, and then in that case, not from Google, for example. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. And yeah, I think this should work. Yeah. I didn't see that it was so fast. Okay, let's go back there <laughs> and I would like you to explain what you did. Uh, I just added the new One more. reverse. Yeah. And how did you implement that? Very simple, just a change instead of splitting the uh -huh. first argument, I just reverse the first argument. Got you, because it was already an array, right? Yeah. All right. And uh, how about to join that? Okay. Uh, now we need to to modify the method again to add the join right here. And okay. Uh, so I think the first modification that we have to do is to add the join. Then we add, we add the reverse, mm -hmm. then we add the split. Okay, so let's add the join right here. And copy and paste. And modify it to, to perform the join operation. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that we stack a modification on this method. The first modification is adding the join. The second modification is adding the reverse. And the third modification is adding the split. Got you. Well, now I'm going to complicate that, OK? So okay. Um, let's suppose in the join function, OK, the join decorator, we want to, I would say, uh, specify for which character we would like to join. Uh, how would you do that? For example, you are joined by an empty string, right? I would like right. to pass a comma or a dash or a slash. How can how how could you make it possible? Okay, let me think. So uh, I have an idea. In this case, I think we should create a decorator factory, which is uh, simply a, a function that returns the function decorator, and then you can send the, the parameter, which is going to be the character to join. So let me call here. I okay, be before, you, you. before you do, what's the difference between a decorator, a factor, and a simple decorator? Uh, a simple decorator, uh, simple decorator is just uh, a function that change the behavior of a method, for example, in this case, but a decorator factory is a method that creates decorators. And as we are creating new decorators, we can customize on at runtime this decorator. Does it make sense? A bit. 
a bit. I'm <laughs> okay. a bit confused. Yeah. Can you could you please elaborate a little bit more your answer? Yeah, let me code here. I think it will okay. be more clear for you. So the idea is to receive the character that we want to use to yes. perform the join. And then we return a function that is the decorated function. So let me cut this function from here and paste right here. Oh, sorry. And now, instead of uh, just uh, placing the annotation, now join is a function that returns uh, a decorator. So we have to call this function. And then we can specify your character here, like this. OK. Oh, sorry, my mistake. But you, OK, add... you, are, you are going too fast, OK? Let's <laughs> analyze your, OK. It's working, the result is working, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's analyze your function. Okay, because you did to did it so fast. So you was having a simple um, decorator, right? And then you change that decorator to return a function. That's why exactly. you need to execute, right? Can you scroll down? Exactly. Okay, at line uh, thirty six, you are just uh, calling without uh, a parenthesis, which which means you are not executing that, right? You are getting whatever it was passing. But now it's a function, and then you need to execute that. And that function receive a argument, which is the character that we want to join, right? Exactly. All right. right. So could you uh, please now explain me your your function? Let's 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 take a look at your function. The join function? Yeah. You you add a parameter there, right? Yeah. And then you want to return which a function. It? And the signature of these functions are the same, right? Sorry? The, the signature, the signature. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, not the same. The, the function that I am returning uh -huh. is a decorator which has uh, specific uh, parameters, the, the, the decorator parameters. Okay, all right, great. All right, I'm not complicated it even more, okay? That's good for now. Now, okay. uh, let's bring you, you can stop sharing, okay? Um, okay. All right. Uh, so now, uh, I would like you to clean up that project and I'm going to explain you the next challenge, okay? Uh, we need to replicate that in JavaScript, okay? Without using TypeScript. Did you get that? Okay. Yeah, uh, you, you, we I can have that. the same approach. Create a function that will split, create another function that will reverse our array, right? And another function to join the array using a parameter, right? Okay. All right. right. Uh, as that said, what we need to do to make it possible in JavaScript? Okay. So using the same approach, I think, uh, we can create three separated functions and then uh, combine this function using a function composition. Do you know function composition? Yes, I know function composition. That will be a challenge. Okay. All right. That's great. <laughs> okay. So could you please uh, share again your screen? Uh, but that time we're not going to use TypeScript. Okay. You can use TypeScript if you want, but uh, I'm good with JavaScript. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. I can see your screen, yes. Is it my screen visible? Yes, it is. Okay. All right. All right. Then you have uh, index.js. All right. So, yeah. uh, all right. Let's do that using uh, function composition, right? Compose function in JavaScript. How would you do that? Okay. Uh, as uh, any problem uh, involving uh, functional programming, we should uh, create small functions and then combine these functions to reach a more complex solution. So I will create a very simple function to split, another very simple function to reverse, and then another one to join. And okay. then I'm going to combine these functions. Okay, same approach. Okay. 
iterand string split and another one to reverse and here we're going to have the array and then we can reverse the this array to reverse oh sorry double return that's okay, okay. and yeah. then we can join the the array Makes sense. Okay. And my my idea here is to to create a composed function. Okay. For example, suppose const composed function function. And very many many libraries and frameworks has a compose function in which you can compose uh, from the right to left. So join. Uh, reverse, reverse, and then split. So now we're going to have a composite function, and we can call this composite function to perform these three operations. Okay. Okay. But okay, yeah, we I think it. We, yeah, we need to implement this compose function, which it's going to compose the mm -hmm. three functions, you know? Yeah. I thought you said JavaScript already has that. All right. Already have that. And then I'm yeah, there are, where these compose functions come? Okay, let's implement that, right? Yeah, we can implement. All right. So okay, let me think. Compose. Okay. So the compose function actually we receive an array of uh, functions. So let's use REST operator functions. And then uh, it should return a function with the same signature as this one. OK, because the idea is to send the string to, to this function. And then this function will return a value that is going to be used as input for this function. And then the output of this function, we will input the another function. And then we get the overall output. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Does it make sense to you, this, yes. this solution? Yeah, let's go for it. OK. So the, fun the function return by compose should receive the string, right? The string that we going to put in this pipeline of function. And I think that here is the, the big challenge. Let's first start with uh, just logging these functions. Okay. Uh, I, sh I have to call this composed. Okay, let's see. Okay, I have this split the reverse, and then the join. All right. Yes. Uh, oh, my mistake here. Uh, the compose operator uh, performs from uh, right, right to left. Right to the left, yes. Yeah, exactly. So we, we need to change here instead of uh, the opposite order. So it's split, reverse, and then join. Yes. OK. OK. Uh, now we have the correct order, but uh, we need to execute these functions on the opposite order. Yeah, so, because you are uh, adding from the left to right, but you, you know, for a compose in JavaScript, you have to execute from the right to the left, right? Okay, I use uh, a reverse. So functions, I'm going to reverse, and then I'm going to, to loop to each uh, function. And this is the function. And we're going to execute this function. Uh, I think here, oh, I'm going to change the string to be just from here. Like 
is going to be a string. Let's see. Oh, okay, we need to return the string. Yeah, I think it's working. All right. We are so we are looping uh, over these functions and each output of one function we are applying to the next one. Okay. Great. Makes sense. Yeah, you don't need to explain the function because it's the same concept that you applied before, right? I just want to um, um, ask you. So, line 16, right? You have your functions, it's a, a list of functions, then you are reversing that because we need to execute from the, the right to the left, right? And then you are exactly. for each your function. So, we are looping uh, through your list twice, right? So, uh, how can we improve that? You don't need to do, okay? Uh, just let me know uh, how can we improve that because we are doing two loops. Can we remove that and, and do one loop set? What yeah, do we need to do? Oh, yeah, for sure. We can remove this for each to uh, reduce, right? To reduce operation. But reduce also will go from yeah. the left to right. Yeah, but there is a, another reduce, which is the reduce right, that one. And then we can remove the reverse. So now we have only one loop. Okay, let's you implement know. that now, so. Okay, so uh, the first argument will be the accumulated value, right? Right. The current value will be the current function. And then we run the function with the accumulated value. Function. And the first value will be the string. And then we can just uh, return this. Let's see if it's work. Yeah. Nice. It's All work. right. But following, oh, we can, okay, we can remove this to have uh, complete error function. Okay, nice. Yeah. All right, so you have uh, nested functions, right? Yeah. All right, uh, but in the other example, you pass um, a character to split, to join, right? How can we do exactly. that? Let me think. Uh, maybe we can customize this function join to have another parameter. And then we can use another function operator like a curry. Do you know curry? Mm -hmm, yeah. All right. Okay. So um, you don't need to do. Okay. That's it for me for today. That's it from my side. You can't stop sharing. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. So uh, that's it for today. Uh, and if you come to the interview and uh, do it, perform that during the interview, I would pass you for sure, okay? But this is only the one of the, the practical tests that we apply, okay? Uh, also, uh, you create a compose function uh, in JavaScript, right? We also, uh, I'm not going to tell you guys what we do, what we ask, okay? You have to, to, do the, uh, to see that by yourself, okay? As that said, if you enjoy this kind of um, uh, challenge, please leave me a message in the comment section below and give me a thumbs up for this video, okay? And that, as that said, that's a wrap for our side, Alexander. Thank you for joining in this meeting today, okay? And perform this test. Uh, that was really helpful. And uh, yeah, thank you for, for doing that, okay? Thank, thank you, Jose. Thank you for your time. Oh, that was my pleasure, and I hope to see you again in the future, okay? Sure. Nice. And as that said, as I mentioned, that's a wrap from our side. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please leave me a message in the comment section below. Give me a big fat thumbs up for this video. And let me know in the comments uh, what kind of challenge you would like to see in the upcoming uh, videos. Okay, we can do everything that you want. You just need to ask me. And if you are not subscribed to our channel, there's a uh, red button down below. Uh, subscribe, you can hit that. It's easy, free, and it's uh, quick. You just need to press that if you are not subscribed already, right? 
And if you don't have account at Turing, I'll put the link into the description section below, turing.com. Go there and create your profile. It's also free, easy, and fast, okay? Uh, once you create your profile, you have to pass in the Turing uh, vetting process in order to get a job. But I'm here to help you to achieve that, okay? Uh, I hope to see you again in the next episode. And until then, give me a big fat thumbs up and stay safe. Take care.